All right. Hi, everybody. Hello. Hello. What's going on? How are you doing? Welcome. We're going to let everybody get uh, logged on here. We'll give them a few minutes, um, maybe two, and then we'll get going. Uh, how are you guys doing? Awesome. Great. Good. Very, very well. Alex, is it like, is it the middle? No, it's only nine o'clock for you. It's like two hours it's past your bedtime. Um, <laughs> if this were any other night, I would be, I would have been asleep 30 minutes ago. See, see. Yeah. This is a special treat for me. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you for staying up for us. You know, Carl got up for us at two in the morning, the first one. To uh, come. Okay. I didn't actually think about it when I was like, oh, it said 7 p.m. Like that'll be late for them. But nope, it was the middle of the night for the, for him. But <laughs> It was good. It was good. All right, everybody. So let's kick this off. Hi, everybody. My name is Nicole Christensen, and I'm coming to you from CrossFit HQ and the content team here at EDU. We have a really special, awesome episode for you guys today. This next webinar, we're going to, for our third Q&A, we're going to focus on a topic that is so important to so many people, so many of our CrossFit coaches. And that is the CCFT exam. And specifically, we're going to talk about how to prepare for it. So thank you guys for joining us. Uh, we're, going to touch, we're going to touch on a couple different housekeeping items. And then I'm going to introduce this awesome crew that you see in front of you. All right. So before we go through introductions, we've enabled closed captioning. If you don't want to see it, just go ahead and click the CC icon that's at the bottom. And you can hide, your, hide the subtitles. And those will go away. Now the webinar is being recorded and we're gonna make it available to everyone that registered for this webinar, even if you're already watching right now. And we'll send that out after the recording in the next couple of days. Now, anytime you have a question or comment, please, please feel free to drop it into the chat and we'll answer as many questions as we can throughout the hour. And then finally, we'd like to know a little bit about you guys. So we're gonna drop a few questions into a poll now and We'll, you can answer those if you have a quick second and we'll do that while we introduce everybody here. So let's talk. We've got an awesome crew here. First up, we have Amy Hollingsworth. Amy, you can say hi, wave. There hi, she everybody. is. Amy is the senior manager for EDU coach programs. And she used to be a speech pathologist, but has a background in healthcare management. And now currently she joined CrossFit in around what, 2012? Mm -hmm and specifically to develop the certification program and its professional development requirements. So she's responsible for acquiring and maintaining that accreditation for the CCFT. She's also a 13 year, own affi 13 year affiliate owner, Kitsap CrossFit. So Amy, thanks for joining us. You're gonna have a ton of, you're gonna keep us straight, keep us with all the parameters. Okay, Sounds cool. Good. We also have Stefan Roche. You guys might recognize Stefan from the last webinar. He's a senior content writer at CrossFit EDU. He's got, you say over 15 years of strength and conditioning, collegiate tactical coaching, but I feel like it's more than that, but we'll say 15. Yeah, and then, somewhere in there. 15 yeah, to somewhere 20. in there. Yeah. And then seven years as a CrossFit seminar staff trainer. And uh, yeah, so welcome, Stefan. Thanks for being here. All right, Alex, staying here, up late present. for us on the East Coast of the United States. So Alex is a seminar staff head trainer. He also works in EDU for programming as a programming content writer. And you wrestled in grade school and through college before you found CrossFit. So you've got like that wrestler's edge for CrossFit. And you're currently coaching and training CrossFit. Where are you, got, where are you coaching currently? CrossFit rest in Northern Virginia, just outside of DC. Awesome. Love it. Great Love gym. It. Great gym. Yep. Yeah, I've been there many times. Um, okay. And then Chris McDonald. So Chris McDonald is our, is our special guest is our, our late ad. So Chris, uh, we're super excited that you jumped on cross or Chris is the owner of Rubicon CrossFit. He's seminar staff, flow master, CrossFit level four trainer. Nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. BS in biology, MS in exercise science, all American collegiate soccer player. And he's been training people for over 18 years. So Thank you guys for hopping on. We're gonna talk all the different pieces of the CCFT exam. All right, so before we dive in, Amy, can you take a moment to just give us a broad brush overview of the CCFT exam? What is it, how it works, all that good stuff? Absolutely. 
<clears throat> okay, so the Certified CrossFit Trainer or the CCFT is a unique program because it's the first and only certification that's accredited to an international standard. Um, there are two eligibility paths and for people who take and pass the exam after taking the level one and the level two certificate courses, they're given the designation of Certified CrossFit Level 3 Trainer or the CFL3. This is a rigorous exam. It is a computer-based exam that is administered at a third-party testing center. Our partner is Pearson View, and they have testing locations all over the world uh, to include U.S. military installations. The sure. exam has 160 questions, and candidates have four hours to complete this exam. And it's made up of multiple choice questions and photo and video identification and some matching items in the form of drag and drop. This is a pass-fail exam, and there are no numeric results, and we do not publish the passing score. But once a candidate passes, they're required to maintain the credential via the recertification requirements every three years. And those currently include obtaining 50 CEUs, 300 coaching hours, and maintaining uh, CPR and AED training. Awesome. Super cool. Yeah, so a lot goes into that and a lot goes into that accreditation process and then maintaining that credential. So we took a number of questions from you guys um, prior to this. Somebody actually just let me know that chat might be disabled. So I'll fix that here in a moment. But we'll dive into the questions that you guys sent us in advance. Thank you for doing that. Uh, so the first one we got was, what are the benefits of obtaining the CCFT? I'm wondering because I'm a coach and looking into the credential. And I also want to know the, what, the, what the benefits are for myself as well as for my affiliate. Yes, I'll jump in. Uh, go ahead, go ahead. I'm a value, you know, I, I came from the uh, commercial gym setting early on and, uh, you know, did all the major certifications, you know, the NASMs, the CSCSs, got a master's degree. And it was interesting because I went and did my level uh, four and while I had all this theoretical knowledge, you know, my practical application of that was very glaring a weakness when I got to get in front of people like Nicole Carroll and Todd Whitman, Adrian Bosman, when they were evaluating that practical application. I think what's cool about the level three is it's got a really good balance between what our actual coaching, you know, uh, responsibilities are, the mechanics of actual movements and how we perform and execute those movements. How do we see those movements? Whereas most certifications, you're just taking theory and you're going to do some programming, but they really don't dig into that practical application. So people that have that level three, it really, you know, shows not only you can study the text and understand some of these major concepts of our program, but also you can do it um, on the floor. Yeah, I, I, I totally agree with with that piece. Um, for, for me, when I was looking at, at the level three, I've never been one to chase letters after my name but I have been one to chase knowledge. And I think all great coaches, I got that from the great coaches who taught me, they were always learning. And another piece that these coaches always taught me, like a, a Mike Bergner, someone like a Dan John or Louis Simmons, they said, if you want to learn about powerlifting, if you want to learn about Olympic lifting, then sign up for a meet and train for it. And you'll really, really learn how to do it. Same thing here. You will study harder. You will dig in harder. You will take more detailed notes. You will pay more attention to the material with that test date ahead of you. And when you go through that material, when I sat down and, and Amy, I think you've created this whole uh, study. Uh, I don't know what it is, like all the material that's put together. It's articles, it's videos. You sit down, you get immersed in that stuff. You're not just studying for a test, but you get excited at all the stuff that you're reading again, maybe for the fifth time or seeing it for the first time. And you learn a ton just preparing for, for the test. Hopefully you pass, but even if you don't pass, it's well worth the effort of digging in, taking that challenge and, and going to the meet, going to the test for sure. Absolutely. Yeah, that's a good analogy for sure. How much harder did you guys study or how much did you guys really dig in when you were studying and learn things that you didn't really expect to learn or that you weren't expecting to read through, but you took away from in the process of going through all those materials? A lot, you know, <laughs> going through it. Um, you know, I think there's a lot of content in there that might not necessarily be unfamiliar for trainers, especially at this point in their coaching journey. Uh, what I think is really cool is that as you go through the breadth of different content that's in there in the study 
reference list, you're going to find things that you have seen before, but you're going to end up seeing them through perspectives that you may not be used to. And I think it might be knowledge, content, information that you've heard at some point in your coaching journey, but now that you're a few years into it, you're down the road and you're at the point where you're preparing for level three, as you digest this information, maybe for the second or third time, it resonates slightly differently. And you can see things in new lights, which then allows you to apply them in different ways. On top of genuinely finding new information that you might not have seen before, there's tons of stuff in there. The list is long. Right, absolutely. And a, okay. a lot of those articles that were um, written in the early days of CrossFit, you know, Coach Glassman wrote those articles. If you're just reading it to read, that's great. You get a you get a good knowledge from that. But if you're trying to understand every sentence, man, that stuff is dense. And and you, if you if you stop to think about what he just said in a, in an article, and you maybe you don't quite grasp it, it'll take you a little while thinking about it, checking some other resources, really digging into it. That's where the the real learning happens. That's that's why people like you, you talk to Chuck Carswell or someone who's been doing CrossFit and teaching CrossFit for years, over 500 seminars. Every time he goes back and reads those original articles, he learns something new. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we had an interesting question come through the chat, and I'm just going to throw it in right now because uh, because we'll we'll go off script right from the beginning, everybody. Uh, so. <laughs> This one's for Chris and maybe Stefan. Can you guys compare the level three, the CCFT exam directly to the CSC, the CSCS exam in terms of content difficulty? Do you have any comparisons, um, you know, having having worked with both? Um, I, I, How are I, they different? I, things like that. It was definitely a, uh, the CSCS was definitely a tough test and I studied my butt off for it, you know, read through a lot of the material. Um, what I would say is that in kind of building off the first part is again, like, you know, you get a lot of that, you know, white collared academic knowledge that, you know, definitely there's some value there, but one of the things that I really appreciated going through the CrossFit credentials, um, you know, was that had that practical application. So, you know, there just isn't a lot of that in the CSCS and it's a, it's a, it's a difficult test. Obviously it's one of the, you know, highly sought after uh, certifications, um, but the level four, the level three for me, uh, and again, this was 2006. I don't know if it's changed at all um, since I since I took it. Obviously, I haven't been following that program anymore. But um, yeah, obviously, both hard, but yeah, as I, like I said, I think the level three just gives you a lot more of what the practical application, and you're going to have more uh, application to what you actually do on the gym floor versus a CSCS is just a lot of like memorization of material. Um, so that would that to me, that's the big difference. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I, I definitely agree with that. I took that test in 1990, whatever. And uh, <laughs> it, uh, it comes from one book. So you read the one book and that's where the, the information comes from. It's not a bad test. It's a good test. It's a good starting test. It is, it is a tough test as well. Mm -hmm. What I would say is that there's, and this is my personal opinion. So take it for what it's worth. There's a compromise in putting material out there that no one's going to disagree with. Whereas the level three is CrossFit. There's no compromise on that. This is how we do things. This is how we coach things. This is how we teach things, how we explain things, all that stuff. And, and so when you look at the material, the study material for the test, there's so many different sources, but they've been curated because that is CrossFit. That is the way CrossFit coach Glassman and down look at, at how we teach the methodology and understand the methodology. So that's what I took it's much, much broader. It's much broader. The, the level four, like you look at the no, different number of authors, like Stefan's exactly right. It's one textbook. Whereas like the study material for the level three comes from a very broad group of people that are professionals inside our community that have very good things specific to the program and lifestyle. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's get into some specifics on preparing for the exam. So a lot of questions uh, came in about how can I best prioritize my studying in preparation for the exam? They've heard that some experienced coaches uh, um, have taken it and they've prepared in, uh, in a number of different ways. So I thought it would be fun. Let's just go around the room since you guys have all sat for the exam and talk about how you prepared. So 
Alex, why don't you kick us off? How did you prepare for the level three or the CCFT exam? In a way that people, yeah, in a way that people are not going to like to hear. Um, okay. I was three months out of college when I took my level three. So my studying and test prep skills were very sharp. I read through every single article listed in the reference guide, watched every wow. video. And then I went back a second time and I took notes on every single article and video. And most of those notes were at least a page long, if not two or three. Then I went back a third time and read all of the articles again. And then I went back a fourth time and read all my notes. So I had gone through the content four times and then touched up here and there when I sat for the test. And I would say it made me feel very confident when I sat for the test. And that worked yeah. for me because my studying skills were sharp. I recognize not everyone's probably going to be in that boat, but I do feel like more exposure to the content made the test much, much more manageable. And Alex, how much at the time were you coaching classes? Um, you know, were you coaching I... five classes a week, 12 classes a week? How often were you coaching? Probably somewhere in the vicinity of 10 to 12 classes a week and then doing a handful of personal training sessions and foundational sessions. Um, like I said, I was just out of college. So that's all I was doing through college. And what I was doing, I started managing a gym at the time. So I was in an affiliate 20, 30 hours a week, if not okay. more. Nice. Okay, cool. All right. Amy, Chris, or Stefan, how'd you guys prepare? Not, not too much different from Alex, but my studying skills weren't as sharp. So I, I read all the articles and then for every article I took notes in my book here, I still have this. I still go through this because all the information wow. is condensed in here. And then, I, so I set out two hours a night. I was a strength coach at a college and every night I set out two hours to study, start a watch, go. It didn't matter if I finished the article or whatever. At the end of two hours, I was done, but that was my block of studying. I, f I went through all the articles. I think, uh, how many domains are there? Learning domains are there? Is it six? Six. Six. Mm -hmm. So I just started with the first learning domain and, and it was that one. And I hit all the articles for that. Then I went to the next learning domain, made my notes. And then I, uh, I had people quiz me on these notes for, for a couple of weeks mm -hmm. before I went and took the test. Okay. Okay. Chris, what about you? Yeah, similar. I mean, um, a lot of that stuff, when I started going through it, you know, I mean, you can see the binders in the back. When I first found CrossFit, I can remember the first workout. I printed out every journal from 2001 to 2008 and got after the reading. So a lot of that stuff was, you know, uh, second time I'd seen that material, even third time, because, you know, that that content was very new in the exercise uh, industry. Like, you know, that that stuff, you know, the stuff that was going on, you know, now the, even the commercial gyms are completely different as far as you know, what you see and even content on fitness. So for me, th th that was very unique to find that kind of uh, material. So a lot of the stuff was review. Um, I spent time, um, you know, like on some of my, you know, weaknesses or even things that I've been using a little bit more. So I retake the kids course because I took it like eight, nine years ago and I absolutely loved it. Um, I took the master's course online. So, you know, cause those are a lot of people that I'm even training now. So uh, those I dug mm -hmm. in a little bit harder. And I still review the other stuff, but I kind of, you know, just kind of focused on some areas I knew I could touch up. And I think the important thing when you're studying is setting a time like Stefan, I have a planner. I just put it in my planner. That's my time to study. And that, that's just what I do. Um, but making sure that there's quality of the studying, right? It's not just reading and getting through the material. It's like taking your time with it. So I think when people are preparing for this, you know, like give yourself time because it's not, you don't want to just get through the material to get through it. You want to process and understand that material. So really taking your time to read through it, taking your notes. You can hear obviously Alex and Stefan, um, you know, it's important to, you know, really embrace the content. Yeah, absolutely. Amy, do you have anything to add? No, I would. I mean, I, I think I would just really hone in on the fact that the content outline is so important and that it's really, it really um that should be the starting point for everybody and really having a good understanding of what's on the content outline and where you feel like your strengths and weaknesses are. And what I, I did see a comment in, um, in the chat that I wanted to touch on in regards yes, to that. Please. Someone asked something about if the study materials change, how does that impact the exam? And so one of the things that I think is really important to understand is that the exam test concepts, it's not testing, um, 
the study materials. So the study materials are not meant to be memorized and then you're just regurgitating that information on the exam. The study materials are going to give you the concepts that you need to know and understand and then you're applying that within the exam. So, um, you know, the study materials can be they're just the guide and I think I hope someone I think that Sarah actually posted the link to the study materials online oh I but just reposted that, it as well yeah okay perfect so that's where you can find the content outline and then the list of you know the study guide that has the pdf list of all of the study materials and it's just really it's it's understanding where your strengths and weaknesses are and and then guiding your your preparation based on that okay yes and so along the way for you guys, was there anything that you, if there was an area that you felt like that you weren't as well versed in, or did you spend a, more time on that? I mean, was there, was there stuff that you're like, I, I'm pretty sure I've got, I got this concept or was it pretty much across the board? You were, you were even keel. I, I don't have an MS degree in uh, kinesiology, like some of our Chris. panelists here. <laughs> so got it. You're things sitting like there that. like this. Uh, some of the science, some of the science mm -hmm. stuff. Uh, I mean, there's an article in the study material, I believe is still in there, but it's, it's basically anatomy for jocks, which is, right. which was great for me. Um, some of the technical terms, you got to get used to things like distal and, you know, whatever that you might not use every day when you're talking to someone or you're, or you're coaching them. Those are areas that when I was taking notes, I highlighted those and just memorize these terms, know these terms. So I had a little glossary of terms to, to memorize. I spent a little extra time on it. Got it. Okay. Uh, quick, quick question. We'll use it as a segue. Must I actively, must I be actively coaching at a CrossFit affiliate to be eligible to take the CCFT exam? So the requirement is not that you coach at an affiliate. The requirement is that you coach utilizing the CrossFit methodology. So if that's in your garage, if that is at a Globo gym, as long as you're utilizing the skills and the methodology that you um, learned in your level one and level two, those hours count. Got it. Okay. Wonderful. I, I, I saw, I, I don't know if I, I don't want to derail things, but there was a physical therapist in here who was saying it's hard to maintain their 350 hours uh, with all the, around their work when they're, they're working as a physical therapist. And I'm just going to offer something out there and, and, you know, Amy, you can make sure I'm in the right direction here, but if you are teaching air squats or those kinds of movements as a physical therapist in rehab or think any scale down version of a movement, that's, that's CrossFit. So am I, am I wrong on, on thinking that Amy? No, I would absolutely concur with that. Um, my husband's actually a physical therapist and a CrossFit trainer. So um, there, there's so much that you can apply using CrossFit in a clinical setting and absolutely keep track of that and, and count that toward your hours. Awesome. Okay. I plan to do most of the online courses and then study all the material. Does that make sense? So I think what the person's referring to is CrossFit obviously offers a number of different online courses. Uh, is this something that is seen as helping to prepare or lend itself to, or Amy, you can probably speak to that the best. So we're talking things I, I imagine like the uh, lesson planning course or scaling or spot the flaw, things like that. Right. So none of those courses were specifically designed as prep courses for the level three. Um, but what I would say is I would kind of go back to what we, what everybody mentioned earlier is that if you're looking at the content outline and you feel that there's a hole in your um, knowledge and, or skill level and there is an online course that relates to that, then absolutely take that. Um, but there's certainly no expectation that um, that those, you know, those things will prepare you um, specifically for the exam. Now, I would say that any educational uh, uh, activity is a good thing. Right. Um, so it, it's just a matter of what your needs are personally in terms of how, how you think you can best prepare. Okay, awesome. A couple questions came in about working toward the hour requirement when the pandemic hit. So I was working towards the hours requirement when the pandemic shut down my gym for over a year. Some of my older hours fall outside of the required timeline. Are there any exceptions being made for extenuating circumstances such as this for the L L3 requirements if the total number of hours have been met? Yeah, unfortunately. Not currently. No, yeah, not currently. Okay. There's no way yep. to make an exception for that. Okay. Um, 
So this one came in about, I think there was a little bit of confusion or we just want to cl clear it up. A number of questions came in about uh, not being able, able to perform certain movements in CrossFit and wondering how that might relate to the exam. So things like there are a lot of movements in CrossFit that I can't perform yet, such as a bar muscle up and a ring muscle up. You know, should I take the exam or do you recommend having these movements before trying to sit for the test? Similar questions, uh, are there certain skills that we should be able to perform? Uh, can you guys speak to that a little bit? I think there's two parts of the question. On, on the first, just sort of the, the nitty gritty side, the nuts and bolts, there's no movement required to, for the exam. So it's a written or it's a proctored, proctored exam. Is that fair to say, Amy? Uh, where you're sitting down, you're on a, tested com or a testing computer and you're in your chair the entire time. But I want to pull through that a little bit more. What are the benefits to learning some of these movements and working towards them in a physical standpoint, from a physical standpoint, uh, to being able to perform well on the test, understand movement, things like that? I, I think so. For taking the test, I don't think you need to be able to perform the movements. Some of the best coaches out there especially as they've gotten older in their profession, have stopped right. demonstrating and, and showing the movements. They'll either have someone else do it or they're just so exceptional at cueing that they'll put you in the right position with words or uh, a touch, whatever. Um, so it's the understanding of the movement pattern that's important and so that you understand what you're seeing. To that point, being able to feel the movement yourself, yourself and understand what you're seeing on the screen while you're watching the test might be beneficial to you. So if I, if I know how an air squat feels and I see knees going inside, I'm like, oh yeah, my knees don't do that when I air squat, I see a fault there. So it might be helpful that way, but I don't think it's a barrier at all to taking the test. Okay, got it. Yeah, no. there are many coaches there that have never actually done the sport that they're doing and are very, very effective. Go ahead, Alex. Absolutely. Yeah, and, and Amy talked about <laughs> concepts as well too. And even if you're the athlete, uh, the person who cannot yet perform a given skill, we know that scaling is a big part of what we do in CrossFit and being able to understand how to effectively scale the movement, scale, skill, preserve the stimulus of that or workout is going to go a long way to giving a more robust understanding of movement, uh, workouts that may be questions that are focused on the test. So it just helps develop a more holistic understanding of the movement, both from how to do it, but then also how to modify it. So even if you can't do it, it's okay. But exploring how to scale, how to work around, how to progress through those movements is going to lend itself to helping you prepare for the test. Yeah, okay, like we've got that. It's awesome. We have a number of people that would like a little bit more specific information from you guys. So we understand how you prepared for the exam in terms of what you did, what you studied at night, things like that. But we've got a lot of questions about from from the time you began studying to when you actually took the exam. We talking two months, three months, six months. Help me out. I gave and myself six six weeks. I but what I did weeks. was I picked an I picked an exam date on the day I started studying. I picked an exam date six weeks ahead of time. I know if I'd done it eight weeks, I would have filled the eight weeks with studying in twelve. So I figured six weeks was a good block to go. Okay. Okay. I think for me, I picked one that was two months out, um, maybe somewhere right around there. But like Stefan said before, it's like once you've got that hard date on the calendar, that's like, all right, time to kick things into gear. Yeah, I would say I was about six, six, four to six weeks. I mean, I think the overarching thing here is that you're best served like just having studied as a part of your training career. Like if you're going to be a trainer, there's a background theoretical side you need to have. And then there's a practical application of that stuff. And the two go hand in hand. When I started my career, I was really heavy into the theory side of it. And then I got sh I got shown very quickly in the CrossFit community that my practical application and true understanding of how to teach people movements was woefully lacking. So I spent a lot of time working towards that side. But study has always been a part of my career. Like, it's just one of those things that I'll always do. Just like Safan said, like, a lot of the certification, like, I could care less about any of the, the uh, letters. It's more for my understanding of, like, I have a responsibility to my clients and the people that I train. And some of those people are special populations where it's not just about fitness, it's about like health and true, like, you know, saving lives. Um, and there's a big responsibility to that. And if you're going to be a trainer, there needs to be a commitment. I think what the level three offers is maybe some structure for people. But if you're going to be a great trainer and you, this is your career and this is your passion, you need to find time to just put that studying in. So like by the time I was ready for my level three, you know, I've been doing CrossFit for 
and studying CrossFit for 10 years, you know, so it was, you know, of course it was obviously going to be a little bit easier for me. So for you newer trainers, just, you know, having a commitment to, you know, taking, you know, even SMEs and, you know, I love the practical courses. You know, we did a lot of those early on with Bergener and the kettlebells and, um, you know, Jeff Tucker and gymnastics. And, you know, you're just constantly broadening that knowledge base and then you're taking it to the gym and you're applying it. Like that's going to set up for, you know, I think why the level three is so valuable because it requires that kind of knowledge. Right. Absolutely. Um, and I think that, you know, for, yeah, just as you, as you go through all those different pieces, it kind of becomes evident on when we talk about a professional coach and what it means to be a professional and taking that next step, this is, this really embodies a, a pretty significant step forward. So I want to dig into that a little bit. We talked a little bit about how it benefits the affiliate, what it means for the trainer, but Chris, talk a little bit more about when we look at creating and developing and offering a professional pathway for our CrossFit coaches, what, what does the CCFT exam signify? And, and we don't have to go into the, you know, the, in terms of the intangibles, what does it mean for CrossFit? What does it mean for you as a trainer? Uh, talk a little bit about that. Yeah. I mean, if I have, if I know somebody has a level three credential, um, I know they have a very solid breadth of knowledge in the CrossFit prescription and lifestyle, um, hands down. Like it's, it's not something you can really fake. Like there's a lot of certifications that I've taken, um, in the past that, you know, are sometimes designed to make you pass. Like they want you to get it. Uh, this is not one of those tests. Like you are going to have to work for it and you're going to, you're going to have to, you know, have a commitment, like I said, to both the academic side and the practical application of that. So when, when a trainer tells me or I go to another CrossFit and I, they have a level three credential, like I know they've got a very solid foundation that they're building that training career on. Yeah. And it also speaks to the person. I mean, I've seen a lot of these chats right here, people who are working full-time jobs and then going into their gym and training people, um, obviously families at home that, that take their time. Someone who's going to carve out that time, who feels who has that internal drive to, to gain that knowledge and test themselves and put themselves in that, frankly, uncomfortable position of, okay, I've got to do the work and then I'm going to go get tested on it and hopefully I, I pass. That speaks to to the person definitely. And, and I think, you know, my, for myself, the, the one other thought I, I had when I was going to take the level three is I never wanted to be outworked by another coach. So this was a tangible goal that I could attain. Um, and, and I'd feel bad if I didn't, if I didn't do it, what am I missing out on? If, if I didn't do it, what am I leaving on the table that I don't give to my athletes when I'm training them because I didn't do this? I think a great yeah. point too, to make sure that people know is that I know some very good trainers that have failed this test. Absolutely. So this, this is not a reflection of you as a person or a trainer or your character. It's just, it's an opportunity to show your knowledge. And some people, unfortunately, just aren't great test takers. You know, I'm kind of lucky on that side, you know, similar to what Alex talked about it, just tests haven't been typically, you know, generally that hard, but if you do fail it, what did you get out of it? You still the got journey. knowledge for studying, you know, you got, but there's no way you didn't get better at your craft by right. signing up and taking the test. Yeah. Right. Well, the other right. thing I would add to that is like, for me personally, I come from a clinical background where certification and licensure are required and we're in an industry where it's not regulated. And so when you inject a voluntary credentialing process into that scenario, I think it tends to do a lot to elevate and legitimize the profession. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's something that we're all working toward with, if you're a CrossFit coach, you know, the legit, you know, the legitimacy of what you do, your profession, your passion for it, that it works, that it gets the results that you've, you've never seen happen in any other program. And this is a way of not only just elevating yourself as a trainer, but elevating the entire profession uh, and, and moving, toward, moving toward those credentials. Along those lines, uh, somebody asked, what have been some strategies to promote yourself as a level three coach? And uh, so I think from a I'm going to kick this one off actually, because I think this is something that I've always been very proud of my team at CrossFit Roots, something that I think we can do on a number of different levels, both as affiliate owners and as coaches and as, as our, and promoting to our members at our affiliates. You know, I think one of the first things is, is that when you have a coach, whether it's you or what a coach at your gym that passes the CCFT exam, you need to tell the world. It needs to be on Instagram. It needs to be an email that goes to your members. 
your members should be walking in and high-fiving that coach. They should be bringing them flowers or, you know, <laughs> whatever, a six pack of beer, whatever it is that you need to, you need to explain the gravity of what they just did and the accomplishment. And I think that that is one way to promote it within the walls of our affiliate. I think that also, I think that also spreads to those trainers then becoming more sought after even within, within that affiliate. And then I think it also spreads to that uh, it becomes something that other coaches also want to attain. And so that would be my, my first thing would, when, when a coach at your gym or yourself does pass that exam, you, you want to share it with as many people as possible and, and really celebrate that coach. Uh, what about you guys? What are the, some of the things that you guys have seen strategies to promote yourself or your trainers at your gym as uh, level three coaches, trainers? I love that. I think that's awesome. I love, I love hearing about head coaches at the gym, maybe the affiliate owner and coach who tells their community that they're going to go do this and explains what it is and, and basically puts their butt on the line and then comes back. I mean, I, I love that. And when they pass, it's a huge celebration and everything. Yeah, that's really cool. It is a big accomplishment. Giant, giant. Alex, what you about you? Chris. No, go ahead, Chris. Yeah, I'll come. You, Chris, I actually don't really care about the credential, but I get it all the time. People come in, like, you know, that talk about their credential just looking through the website. Um, you know, so sometimes it doesn't seem like it has the value, but you'd be shocked at how many people actually bring it up and look at the look at the all the coaches before they go to a process. They're going to look at that bio page. And they're going to start to see some of those and start to decipher. I mean, right now, you know, the CrossFit industry, especially in the U.S., it could, you know, it's very, it can be competitive in the, especially in the bigger cities. So separating and differentiating, differentiating yeah, yourself from other. You know, that's a, to me, when I'm looking, when I go to other CrossFits, when I'm traveling, I, and I see that, I'm like, oh heck yeah, we're in good hands. Like we're going to go to this spot because um, again, I know what that test requires, um, and for somebody to pass it, you know, again, you can't wait that. Yeah. yeah, I want to I want to piggyback off that before I answer the question, because one of the initial questions we kick things off with was what is the benefit to the individual, but also as the affiliate? I know for me, if I ever have a member that is moving to another place and it's they're going to some town or some place I've never been to a gym that I can't recommend. The first thing I tell them to do is check out all the different affiliates, try and find someone with the designation of CrossFit level three trainer. And that's where you want to start. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that that's where they're going to end up. That's that's the direction I point them at. So um, that's the benefit to your affiliate and to you as an individual. As far as promoting yourself, I would say just talk about it with your members. Let them know what you're doing, what you're working towards. That, hey, you're saying I'm working towards taking this test or I passed this test. And just talk about it. Keep the members involved um, as you try and think about the working through the material as you implement it in the gym. I think you'd be just be surprised at how many people are interested in knowing what's going on, knowing those things about you. Um, so it's, it sounds like a straightforward answer, but I think you'd be surprised at how much feedback you'll get by just letting people know that you're a level three trainer and really what that means to get there. People are interested, interested in that process. Yeah, I think that a lot of people are surprised when they learn it's a four hour exam and it's 160 questions. They're kind of like, oh, whoa, oh my gosh, like that, that's really what you're doing. I think there's also something too, as affiliate owners or as head coaches, I mean, what a gift to be able to mentor or counsel your level one coaches through the process and encourage them to pursue more credentials. I mean, that's the, the trickle down of that is, is enormous, right? If, if, you know, if you go and you, you take the level two and, and you stop there and all your coaches stop there there, there's a level of, you know, you just kind of hit the plateau, but if you can help coaches really become interested and, and give them the the backing to say, like, I think this is something you should study for and help stay on them. You're not just helping your affiliate, but you're helping that individual grow as a coach. So I think we can pass it on in a number of, a number of different ways. Um, okay. A uh, couple thing, couple additional questions. Let's hit a quick one real quick. Amy, can you talk real quick if the CCFT might is ex offered in other languages? Yeah, so currently it's in English. Um, I honestly, we don't have a timeline for other languages. It's definitely um, something we'd like to do someday. It's just um, anytime you translate material over multiple languages, it uh, takes time and money. And uh, so we just don't have a timeline for that yet, unfortunately. Okay, understood. 
Okay. Um, let's talk. I, I'm going to, this has been come up a couple of different times, but I just want to address it. So a number of people have asked about the pass rate and that's not something that we share uh, with the CCFT and actually none of us actually know. So we won't even go there. It, it lives in a box somewhere far away. Uh, <laughs> uh, a number of people have reinforced on the chat about telling members that they're studying for the CCFT has been a really successful tactic for them. So maybe Very something cool. that everybody on the on this call can can uh, explore. So something that Denise Thomas brought up that I just want to pass on is that you know she pointed out that the CCFT is one way to expand your coaching. So the the first level, the first layer when you go to the level one is your learning, right? And you you're you're pulling in all this information and you you might not quite grasp all the pieces, but you're doing it and you're pulling it all in, but maybe you don't quite understand it. The next level is you understand it and you're able to to communicate it to people and to really hit that next level of understanding, meaning that CCFT pathway is really being able to teach it to other people. And so is there an element for you guys in that studying where you're able to articulate CrossFit better to other people? And, and what does that mean as a coach? What does that mean as a trainer? Is that is that valuable? You know, if you can describe if you can describe and articulate why it's important to come on 5k run day when everybody doesn't want to show up, is that something, a concept that you can start to teach and pull when you study for something like the CCFT exam? I think Amy said it when you said that the test is not about memorized knowledge, but it's about concepts. And as you study this stuff, I mean, I was coaching at a college and I immediately saw, you know, an article I read the night before, two nights before, my understanding of what I was seeing being being better than it was before and being able to apply. So what it allows you to do is look at the situation that's in front of you. And now you have a broader and a deeper level of knowledge and you can come out with a, a, a better solution, a more elegant solution, faster, a more simple solution, probably. And, and it just makes you more effective as a coach. And that's that's where that depth of knowledge is important. So, you know, as, as you get those layers of knowledge, like think about what the truly elite coaches know, right? They not only know a lot in their area, but they know all the way down from their experience, a, a huge depth of knowledge. They, they, they've seen everything. They've, they've encountered every obstacle and every different permutation of what they do. And so they have an answer for it and a solution for it. And, and studying for the level three gives you some of that that you might not get at your affiliate right away or that you might not see. So it advances your depth of knowledge to be able to handle the situations you're seeing. Yeah, absolutely. Um, okay, we've had a number of different questions about seminar staff, so we'll address that one. So a couple of questions in regard to how does one also begin the process to be considered considered for seminar staff? Uh, this is becoming an interest of mine. So CrossFit seminar staff are the individuals that go around the world and they teach the level one and the level two certificate courses. And the entry level credential for that is the passing the CCFT exam. So holding that CrossFit level three, uh, trainer, uh, qualification. So if you're interested in applying for the, for seminar staff, that would be your, your first touch point there. Um, so pretty much straightforward there. Okay. Uh, last, last little bit here, as we go through this, when, uh, Amy, you talked about the, you linked to the study guide. So I'm just going to pull that up real quick here. And so when people are looking at the study guide, I just kind of want to hit real quick that the study material is very, very organized. And so when you guys are studying for the exam and when we share this episode back out, I'm going to add a bunch of different links to the study guide, to the application process, all that. So it's right there in front of you. Uh, but you can really sift through that study material by domain. So Amy, can you talk a little bit about how that's organized and just on the website? Yeah, on the website, um, what we do is we put, um, there's a link to the PDF reference list. And so that's every single, um, it's just a hyperlink to every single article and or video that's on the website. Um, what we want to do is, or what we have done is, is labeled everything within which domain it's in. So um, currently there are six domains. There's screening and assessment, programming, teaching, coaching, nutrition and lifestyle, and class management and professional responsibilities. So again, you're going to look at that content outline and then you're going to choose there you go. which. Yep. Okay. There we go. 
<laughs> there we go. Took me um, a second. Yeah. The, the, so it, it's going to have all of these um, listed by their primary domain. Now, you're also going to see that a couple of these articles um, are um, more than one domain. Uh, so that's, you know, when you're looking at what areas you want to study, you're going to look at the primary uh, domain and then also um, take into consideration what those secondary domains are. Um, and, and these link directly, directly to those articles or okay. and or videos. Got it. Okay. And we will share that when we go and we send this episode out. So I want to close with, when we think about the CCFT exam, if you guys were going to talk to somebody, they're like, I'm not sure if I should take the exam. What would be your why? Why would you tell them, Hey, you should pursue this credential. Stefan, you're in the hot seat. All right. Well, the first thing that came to my mind as I was watching you scroll through that is like, Oh, I'm excited to read those articles. And it would be a way to push you to do the, the studying and the learning that is going to propel you to the next level. It, look, having the, the, the designation after your name is great, but like, like Chris said, even maybe you don't pass on the first time. It is that journey of going through all that material and, and really digging into it that will make you a better coach. I, I can guarantee that it will make you a better coach and it's, it's well worth the effort. And I think setting up and, and signing up for the CCFT is the thing that will push you to go do it. Okay. Chris. I mean, when I'm mentoring trainers and, you know, worked with a lot through my career, um, you know, similar to what I stated before, you know, I think the commitment to uh, understanding what you're doing um, is critical. You know, like we talk about teaching, there's a two teaching is two parts. The level two we talk about it's knowledge and it's how can you effectively communicate that knowledge. So it all starts with knowledge, you know, whether you want to see faults, whether you want to see points performance, but you can't do that to, to correct them. You got to be able to see it first. And if you look at me, I try to emulate the best trainers. And it doesn't mean, I know a lot of people, you know, you go get the degrees. And that stuff's great. But two of the greatest strength conditioning coaches that I know, I would say, is Greg Glassman and Louis Simmons, who have zero background in academic exercise science. But those guys read, I mean, they're reading texts like super training. And Louis had a whole closet of texts that his athletes were required to read. And obviously, if you're going through level three, you can see how much information that Greg Glassman distilled for us and brought this, you know, uh, formula together, um, you know, because of a commitment to the academic side of fitness and then being able to, how do you practically apply that? So if you're going to be a great trainer, that sort of commitment is required. And I think if you, you know, having a level three is going to get something that's going to get you onto track and just give you, you know, basically a, a collegiate, a course on CrossFit that you get to take a test and pass without, you know, paying the out, you know, outrageous amount of fees that universities cost you. Not that I didn't get some benefit from that, but I got far more benefit from this. I found when I started going through the CrossFit credential than the tens of thousands of dollars that I spent. And that's not saying don't go to college. There, there's a lot of great things <laughs> I learned. However, this is another route to make sure that you're a well-rounded on the, uh, on the academic side of your, uh, of your Absolutely. profession. Yeah. Well said. Alex, I think it's just the spirit of what we do. I mean, we try to get fitter in the gym. Um, we want to see forward progress there. And I don't think it should be any different with our coaching. I think we should constantly strive to improve, especially if we are going to try and match the ability to coach the athletes that are getting fitter. As people improve, we need to improve our coaching in order to be able to stay on par with that. But to me, that's just who we are as a community. Um, if you've if you've had your level two for a period of time and you're coming up on that five year mark, I, the next natural step is to challenge yourself and to try and move forward. Keyword being try, even if you don't pass, like Stefan said, like Chris said, it's the journey of going through the material and implementing it in your affiliate as you are studying that forces you to grow as a trainer that drives forward progress in your ability to train others. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay, well, we had two questions come in and uh, we'll just touch on those really quick. Amy, if an individual does not pass, how long do they have to wait before taking the test for a second time? 90 days. Okay, 90 days. And then the last question here was in regard to the level four. Is there a prediction of when the Le CrossFit level four will be released? And what I can tell you and I've been given the okay to tell you <laughs> is that 
we at CrossFit EDU are currently and actively working on it. And when that does uh, come available, you can find it uh, on at CrossFit Training and in the Professional Coach. And just like we did a uh, webinar here about how to pre prepare for the level three, the CCFT exam, we will do something similar. So with that, I wanna thank you guys for staying up. Alex, thank you for staying up past your bedtime. Uh, it was very, very awesome. And uh, if you guys uh, have any more questions, you're always free to um, send us an email. You can email the professional coach at crossfit.com and we'll get back to you. Additionally, we will send the recording of the session as soon as it's ready. And our next Q&A is happening on Wednesday, November 30th at 9 a.m. Mountain Time. You'll get more information on that, including how to register in an upcoming issue of The Professional Coach. Thank you guys for being awesome. Thank you guys for being on here and pursuing further credentials and making yourselves great coaches. And with that, good night. Thanks to everyone. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you.